Welcome everybody. You guys are watching the Scoundrels of Alphatar. It's a homebrew uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e edition um, campaign. Um, playing today um, are my friends from the community uh, that you all know and love. Um, I'm Paul Santos, uh, Paul in the 619. I am your dungeon master for today. Uh, we have um, Trev the Shipping Guru. Uncanny Swag, Marco from Switch Comics. We also have Echo and Dougie Fresh. All right, guys, let's light this candle. Yep, yep. So, how's the music? Is it too loud for you guys? No, it's good. Thanks, Google me. Marco? I'm good, yeah. Echo, how does the music? Is it too loud? I turned mine down individually. Right. So, you already know. And then, um, Swag, you're good, right? Yep. All right. I did. Okay. So, Trev. Trev is playing... Um, Ender Wolf, um, Trev, um, describe your character. I'm a seven foot tall Goliath, paladin, chainmail, uh, two handed, great sword. I look like the uh, guy from God of War. Oh shit, that's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, Uncanny Swag, you're playing Swagster the Wizard. Yes. <laughs> He's a wizard, and he, he likes the swag. Awesome. All right. Marco from Switch Comics. You're playing Morak the Desolate. I like how you always say that like it's my full legal name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I am Morak the Desolate. Uh, I am a seven-foot-tall ogre that is depressed and drunk. Nice. And Echo, you're playing Sabina... Um, is it Ectes? Ictus. Ictus, thank you. I'm playing Sabina Ictus. She's a rather tall drow. Uh, she wears gilded clothing, but subtly so. She was raised with the doors, and she does not like any of you. Oh, that's badass. I like that. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, we have Dougie Fresh. You are playing a uh, Roland Drow? Rolandrial. Rolandrial. Yeah, it's elegant. I like it. So, yeah, it's uh, Rolandrial is a half elf cleric uh, with an acolyte background. Um, it's like a cleric life domain, so pure healer. Nice. All right. So, um, let me switch the camera for you guys. Traveling for days, you now find yourself surrounding a fire as the cold winds of Araba soon approach. A group of unique individuals, if you ever saw them, each with a different appearance, background, and choice in profession, all agreeing to at least work together to claim your fortunes. So, you found yourselves um, coming together and uh, you heard of a city, a city of riches called Alphatar. So right now, that is where you're headed. Um, but for now, you find yourself uh, sur uh, surrounding a fire, um, resting your muscles and your minds after long days of travel. Um, you're near a huge tent. Um, inside this tent are your um, your sleeping bags, your equipment. So, as as you guys are standing around this fire, and the sun is setting, it's 
Sabina notices that there's a disturbance in the horizon. Uh, uh, Sabina, do me a favor. Um, I want you to roll a uh, a perception check. Yes. Oh, I need to take off advantage. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. You could do that. You could keep it that way. We'll we all, we'll we'll take the first roll. Okay. Okay. So you notice that there's a disturbance in the distance. You are the first one to notice it. I I'd like to try and focus on what kind of disturbance it is. Is it a dust cloud? Shimmering wind. What's going on? Okay. Are you rolling for that? Yes. Okay. Would that be perception? Um, you could use uh, perception. Um, you could also use nature. can't tell um, exactly what it is but you have the the your gut feeling that something um, ominous and dangerous is coming your way who's nearest to me um, you are um, if you could see the map uh, you are in the top left of the fire um, next to you is Morak the desolate and Swagster the Wizard. I have my character sheet covering that up. I'm not used to people actually using the map. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, um, I'll, I'll turn to my right. And the sun's just setting. No one's asleep yet. I'm just chilling out. Yeah. I, I'll put a hand on your shoulder and then point towards the disturbance on the horizon. So the, the direction, um, the reason why you, you were the first one, because it's in your line of sight, which is, I, I, I believe you can see it on the map. I'm pinging it, the area. Yes. Okay. So the second one to notice this is Swagster the Wizard. Swag. Uh oh Swag, do me a favor, roll a perception yep. check. And then how do I do that? Okay, so you go to your character sheet, and then on your character sheet, it should say something like perception. So let me look, let me pull up your character. And perception is in the middle. No, middle left. Yeah. Middle left. Yeah. You just um, have to put your um, your cursor on top of it, and it should turn red. And all you do is just click, and it should uh, do the roll automatically. Um, middle left. Yeah, I see, like, there's all the whole list, acrobatics, animal handling, arcana. Oh, okay. Yeah, so about halfway down, there's perception. Damn, that's really small. <laughs> that's what she said. Nah. <laughs> it's just, uh just click on it on the word perception check it should say perception in brackets it'll say wisdom oh okay i got it there you go Did I do it? yeah you rolled 11 okay 11. okay okay so this disturbance um that you see in the sand it's unnatural when you see it. So at this time, um, Morak, Morak, um, the desolate, uh, Rolandriel, and Enderwolf, they look at you guys and they notice that they're, you guys are looking not at them, but like kind of like through you guys. And it's something that's behind you. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, can I can I look behind me and uh, roll a perception to see what I notice? 
No, you're actually. It's uh, where are you? Oh, right yes. here. All right. So I look behind me. I roll perception. Very nice. Okay, so what you'd see is a wave of sand coming your direction, and it's coming at a fast, a fast pace. Okay. Let's see. It says right here. Um, the very ground seems to bring a wave of earth in your general direction. You only have seconds to react. Okay. Take cover. Sorry, I don't mean to be clicking them. I'm trying to open it so I can read it. There we go. So I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna uh, uh, call out your character, and you tell me what you what your character um, does. Trav, the shipping guru. I'm gonna move over to Swag and grab him, and pull him underneath this canopy. Okay. So Swag. Can I do that? So Swag, you let you let him do that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Marco, uh, Morak the Desolate. What does Morak the Desolate do? So this is just like a, like a tent? Is it a what? Or like a tent? Yes, it's a giant tent. But like, probably not going to be able to survive a stand sandstorm, right? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I'd assume a sandstorm would just destroy a tent. Um... I don't know. There's not really anything to like bunker down onto. Re real quick, so I do. I move into the tent then. You can. You can move your character into the tent with Andrew Wolf. Okay. Close the door. <laughs> the door's closed. Hold the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll I'll make my way over there as well. Okay. Cool. What does Sabina do? But could I attempt to use I I I almost said spite growth, but I'm an underdark druid. I don't have that. Okay. Um could I try to use web under the sand? Is that possible? You could attempt to. I'd like to try to do that in the worm's way. So you're going to do it underneath you? Or I, I suppose in front of? Ping, ping the area that you want to uh, cast that spell. Can you ping the assumed trajectory of the creature? Yeah, if you if you like to. Yes, please. Because it looks like it's coming it's coming um, from here, this from this direction to uh, directly to where the fire is. Okay, then I'd like to try to cast it just across the fire. Okay, very good. Okay, and is that all you do? I I, I would also like to take a step to the left. Okay. Last but not least, Dougie Fresh. Yep, yep. So uh, what I would like to do is, let's see. All right, so I'm going to step back next to the Dru you are a druid, right? Yes. Echo. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand next to the druid. So I'm not gonna leave the druid alone. Okay. Okay. So this is what ends up happening. Okay. So it looks like um, a wave of earth is coming toward toward the fire. It is actually um, it's something that's underneath the ground. Uh, you can't see anything besides that. Um, around it is kind of like a um, 
uh, it's kind of like a dust storm um, all around this mound as it comes toward the fire. It comes about uh, about 50 feet to the fire and then it disappears. So the, the impact that you were expecting never happens. Was there any sort of like uh, rumbling or like ground movement or it was just yes. visual? Um, well, the, the, the ground, not under your feet, but the, 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 it was kind of like a wave of, of, of earth coming your way. And it seems like it subsided uh, down into the ground. Okay. Like tremors. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> All right. Uh, I look at I I um, I look at Echo and I ask her uh, if she has any idea what that was. Our brooding drow looks pensively into the sand and simply murmurs, "Curious." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. So as as um, Sabina has that last has that last thought in this direction right here in this area right here pops out change the screen Popping out of the ground oh. comes a um, a a mound a mound of earth that's shaped like a uh, a giant. Ah. So it's gonna look like. Let's see. like that that's what pops okay. out of the ground cute I don't <laughs> so um, as you see it pop out of the ground the first thing it does it attacks the tent no <laughs> <laughs> right. Rolandriel says interesting indeed <laughs> <laughs> All right. So instead of using uh, the built-in um, dice um, on roll twenty, I'm actually rolling real twenty-sided dice. Nice. So um, as Sabina and uh, Rolandriel, they watch this um, this mountain of earth attack the tent um it actually looks like it has two arms two legs but the legs are anchored into the ground so it goes to the tent and it slams it with both its fists knocking the tent to the ground so um i want uh swagster the wizard orak the desolate and Anderwolf. i want you guys to make a a, a saving throw um can either use whatever it is uh, your ability is. Um, you could either use um, your dexterity or your strength to escape being trapped in the tent. Okay, so Marco, uh, you failed your save. I'm waiting on. Um, Trev the shipping guru, and I'm say, um, waiting on Swagster. Where's the okay, How do I do it? With? What's that? How do I do it? Okay. Same place the skills were, but above it. Yeah, whatever's whatever's your um, higher ability, either strength or dexterity. So minus one strength is bad, right? Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I do dexterity then. Yeah. 
If it's on, and what do I do? Click on it? You just go to your dexterity, and it should turn hover over it with your cursor. Um, yeah. From your mouse, and just click dexterity. Just click it. The red, it turns red. Yes. Nice. There you go. Nice roll. So, you end up escaping the tent from falling on you. Uh, swag. Yeah. So you can move your Thanks, full. Brev. You can move your full speed, um, which is I believe you can move up to thirty. Is it thirty feet? If I'm not uh, mistaken. I'm pretty sure. Uh, where, where do you see that? It should be top on the middle. top. Top middle. Top middle. Uh, speed is thirty. Yeah. Yeah. So you can move six spaces in any direction. Uh. I'm going to go up here. Okay. All right. So, uh, Trev, your character, however, did not um, save. Um, so, right now, uh, Switch's character and Trev's character, you guys are trapped underneath the, um, the tent for one turn. All right. So, um, on that, let's roll. <coughs> let's roll initiative, guys. All right. All right. The the one in the middle? Yes, the one that says initiative. Oops, sorry. I mean, oh. I'm not sure. Um, can you guys actually see the turn order, or is it just the DM? Yeah. I, yeah, we can see it. All right. Okay. So, unfortunately, um, the... Earth Elemental. The monster that you're going to fight um, has uh, the first turn. All right. So... This earth elemental actually moves actually toward the wizard. No oh, plan. And it takes one of its um, um, uh, sanded fists and, and tries to punch Swag in the face. Go! Oh. And it succeeds. Well, that's not nice. <laughs> so as as the Earth Elemental um, uh, punches Swag, uh, Swag is lifted off the ground and thrown uh, twenty feet this way. Oh shit! And besides <laughs> that, he takes he takes twelve points of damage. <laughs> Damn. DM coming out heavy. Anderwolf, it is yeah. your turn. Alright, so this tent is on us. Yes. So Does it take an action so to get out? Your action is actually escaping the tent, uh, but you do have a movement. Can I possibly slice the tent open to let Morak have his full turn out of the tent and not be trapped at the beginning of his turn? I love that. Nice. Yes. Teamwork. Please. Um, All right. Go ahead and um, you would, it would be a, 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 a easy skill roll. So if you could just roll a, uh, like a, like if you want to, because if you're going to attack with your sword, just attack with your sword. I'm just looking for a okay. particular number for you to hit, which is great. 21. <laughs> <laughs> you are successful. 
<laughs> and then I can move, you said? Yes, you can move. Actually, move there. All right. Okay. Swagster, you just got thrown 20 feet. It is your turn, sir. Do, do I have to subtract my points or whatever? Because I got punched in the face? Yeah, please. Where, where do I do that? Um, you go. You actually could do it from your the, your um, your token on the battlefield. Uh, just click okay. it. You'll see three um, bubbles: um, a red, yep. a green, and a blue. The yep. red the red is your hit points. The green is your armor class, and the blue is your healing surges. Okay. That you're gonna have to use um, after this encounter. <laughs> oh, ab after I, uh, I don't need to change it because I got hit. You could change, yeah. You could change your hit points now. Yeah. So what? Uh, what am I? Uh, eight now. Click on. How do I click on? Click on the oh, red, and you can actually just press minus twelve, enter. Yep. Perfect. All right. So can I? Can I do? I can do something. You can do something. Can I? Can I cast a? Can I cast a spell? Oh yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, I can I can I ask my comrades what spell I should cast? <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> I'll I'll let you do that for a um, bonus action. I don't know what that means, but that sounds okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say? I say. People, help. I got punched in the face. What spell should I use? <laughs> um, well, not knowing what spells you have, uh, <laughs> I would say uh, whichever one is at the top of your list. <laughs> <laughs> Flash. Is that, the, is that the most powerful one? Is it the top yeah. of the list? No, your most powerful one would be probably a level two spell. How do you, how do I see if I have a level two spell? You have uh, at the top on the right. You click your spells. See how there's core, bio, and spells. Yes, you have so something. Click on spell. Swag, you have something Yo. called thunder wave. Yes, I do. Is that a good one? That is a good one. Okay, I'm gonna thunder wave his ass. All right. So if you go to your character sheet, um, yep, the front page is called core, right? Yep. Bio is like your history, and then there's a there's a a, a a purple square next to bio. It said spells. Yes. Okay. You don't have to click that, um, because well, that's that's the long ways. Your, your shortcut can, is uh, in the middle there. Yeah, in the middle. I just click Thunderwave. Yep. Just click it. Oh, it says cast what level. What level? Your third level. I'm the third level. I'm hell yeah. I'm going. I'm going level three. Well, you, you, you. Get, it's it's what spell level? So, oh. yeah, I, I think Thunder Wave is a level one spell, so it would be level one. Oh, bummer. All right, I'll do level one then. All right. So on the on your Thunder Wave spell, uh, click it so it populates on the the chat on roll twenty. Okay. Did it do it? It did. So it looks like the the Earth Elemental has to do a Constitution uh, save. It has to roll twelve or better. But let me okay. um, let me read the the uh, the flavor on the uh, the flavor text for Thunder Wave. Okay. okay. A wave of thunderous force sweeps out from you. Each creature in a fifty foot cube originating from you must make a Constitution saving throw. On a failed save. The creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. In addition, unsecured objects that are completely within the area of effect are automatically pushed 10 feet away by the spell's effect, and the spell emits a thunderous boom audible out to 300 feet. And it says right here, you cast this spell using a spell slot of second level or higher 
The damage increases by 1d8 for each slot level above first. So you could have uh, cast a spell at a higher level. Um, how high? It uh, depends on your uh, third level. It, it would be two because there's nothing higher than two at third level. So you could have, you want to cast it at a second level? Sure. Okay, so if if the um, if the earth elemental um, does not save, it will take 3d8 damage that you're going to roll. Okay? If it does save, your 3d8 damage is cut in half. So let's, okay. let's see if um, I'm going to roll um, I'm going to roll a save for the earth elemental. Which and he failed. needs to be, you gotta, gotta move one step closer because it's only I, a 50 foot range. Can I do it now? Yeah, you can move. I'm gonna go right here. Nice. Okay, so the earth elemental did not save. So roll a 3d8. And I do that on the little dice thing? Yes. You could roll, you could go open the dice up. And then um, there's a D8. Yep. Uh, uh, click the three. Did oh I do god. it? You did do it, but it rolled low. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Is that oh my god good or oh my god no? It could have been better. Um, it could have been better. <laughs> yeah. It could have been better. Uh, you actually want, you actually don't want. I've I've learned Paul just uh, sidebar. I've learned that when you roll the dice from that. Uh, the thing in the top left, yeah. the rolls seem to always be low. Mm -hmm. So it's better to roll it from the, like he rolled, like when he clicked it the first time, it rolled his, it rolled his damage. He should just click his care, his, uh, on his character oh. sheet. You know what? Oh, now, you know what? I'm okay. I'm cool with that. I'll let you re-roll. Cause that, that was, pathetic. oh, let's do that again. <laughs> All right. So, but so, do it from your character sheet. My character sheet. And so this is, you're erasing this one then? Yeah. So then I go to the spell. Yeah, not from spell. From the from that first screen, the way you did it the first time when it came up the first time, it rolled it underneath. Okay. So I do this, and then I can pick the level two. Yeah. Yes. And then submit. Yeah. See, so it rolls it right there, right underneath. So it rolled the damage was eight. Right, Eight we'll thunder, <laughs> higher level. We will take the we'll take the nine. <laughs> <laughs> but that that is the way you do it, though. Okay. 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 So after Swag gets hit by this Earth Elemental, he's thrown back. You know, immediately Swag stands up, dusts himself off, and casts his spell. Um, it is um, from his hands. There's like a a a tremor. And it makes a big boom, and the Earth Elemental is is hit with this uh, wave of force, and it's it's pushed back ten feet. Toward the fire, and with it hitting the fire, it actually takes um, an additional. It takes an additional six points of damage. Yeah. Take that! Relandriel. Alright. So, I'm going to use a bonus action to cast uh, Shield of Faith on... Oh wait, no, I don't want to do Shield of Faith. Sorry, wrong one. I want to do... I think it's this one. Where did it go? Never mind. I think I'm going to save that. I don't need to now. Um, so I'm already in range of the of the guy of the dude. Yes. So I am going to. I'm actually going to stay where I am because I'm flanking from here. Uh, so and I'm going to your attack. Yeah. So I'm going to cast or up to cast. I'm going to use my mace. So I have a mace and a shield. So I draw my mace and I go ahead and take a swing at this dude. So I crit. 
Nice. Crit. So crit, in in my game, it's um, max damage um, of your weapon type um, plus your bonus, and then um, depending on the weapon, you get an additional uh, weapon roll. All right, so that's 1d6 plus 2, which is 8 damage plus uh, d6. Yeah. So 8 plus 1. <laughs> so 9 damage. All right. That works. Okay. And I am not going to move. I'm going to stay right there. Morak the Desolate. So, um... So, Morak, you, you had the tent fall on you, but all of a sudden you see a, a great sword open um, a opening in the tent. So you are free to walk out and uh, it is your turn. Um, let's see. Well, then I'm just going to rush up and attack this motherfucker. Okay, so you also have um, advantage on your attack because you are flanking the Earth Elemental. Oh yeah. <clears throat> uh, what was your weapon type? Um, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Rolandriel, Doug, your character. Yeah. What was it your was character a, type? A, a mace. A mace. Uh, okay. Bl bludgeoning. Okay, I just read this right here. Um, Earth elementals have damage resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical mm -hmm. weapons. So the damage that you gave it, it's cut in half. How much damage did you create? Was it? Nine. Nine, so it's half of that. Uh, five, so I have to add four more hit points back. Hmm. Okay, so this is what you notice. Um, everyone on the battlefield, you notice that when the, uh, the cleric hit the earth um, elemental with his mace, that it kind of went through the earth elemental. So they didn't have a full. They didn't have the full impact. Uh, my character sheet is different from last time. I like different weapons and stuff. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh it's just weird. Like, cause I had a, a, a scimitar last time, and now I have uh, a battle axe, a long sword, and I think I, I think I had the javelin before. I gave you um, heavier weapons. Okay, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I was just like... That gives up more damage. Gotcha, I was just confused. Was it? All right, uh, okay. So you rush out of the tent? Yeah, I'm just going to charge and attack. I, mean, I was just like looking at my different weapons okay. now. So you are a barbarian, correct? Yeah. So... Um, do you do anything special before you attack? Uh, no, nah, I was just charging on him, attacking him. Okay, very good. So, 14. 14 is an actual miss. Ah, oh, I suck at it. So, so, your battle axe actually goes right through um, this um, earth elemental, and it doesn't uh, cause any damage. And you're kind of bewildered because you hit it straight on. Sabina. Yes. It is your turn. Who took damage? Um, uh, Swagster. I, I did. Okay. <laughs> Swagster, so wizard. You saw that? <laughs> I did. That's dope. <laughs> that is dope. <laughs> I was wondering if anybody would even notice. <laughs> I did when I hovered over your your token. I'm like, oh, that's dope. For some reason, I can't see other players' names on the table, but I usually can. You know what? I think I need to change that. Um, I think it's because it's. Uh, hold on, I can change that right. Much appreciated. Yes. Show the players. Show the players. Show the players. 
Tell me if that's if that made it different. Nope. Awesome. Because uh, still, still only see myself. Awesome. Because I had it so I show show to players. Oh, I think I've just shared it with you guys. You guys already see that. Uh, all right, we'll work on that, guys. I'll I'll, I'll work on that. All right, so if I just move, if I just move to the west directly, I'll open up for opportunity attack against this golden guy, right? If you, yeah, if you get it within his range, his uh, melee range. All right. Then I'm going to step around my friend here. Friend, using that term very loosely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to head to the other side, okay. get a little bit better vantage point with these guys. And how is my wizard friend doing? Is he looking like the damage was a lot on him? Yeah. He's, he's bloody. He's bloody, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm only at an eight. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I right, thought about then. healing him, but I didn't see the importance. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep an eye on our enemy and ready myself to to keep going next turn. So I, I suppose that, like uh, just prepare a, a defense type thing. Okay. Just in case. All right. So who was the last one to hit the Earth Elemental? It actually was Morak. That be me. Well. Dark the Mesolite well, actually oh, yeah, hit, yeah. hit the Earth Elemental, but he didn't get any. He didn't cause any damage, so it attacks Morak the Desolate, and that is a twelve. Does a twelve hit? Uh, no. <laughs> I think so. A twelve does not hit. Nah, yeah, I'm good. So it actually tries to slam its. Um, its hand on top of Morak. Where Morak is, is um, he's actually light on his feet, so he moves to the side, and it actually it misses him. Anderwolf. I'm gonna take my great sword and just try to lop off that arm that, that just missed him. Okay. You have advantage on your on your melee attack. Nice. That was a hit. So, 10. Okay. So, again, um, non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing weapons that are non-magical, um, it has resistance to that damage. So, instead of having 10 points of damage, it only takes 5. Interesting. So, but you do lop off. Was it an arm or a hand? What did you try to lop off? Yeah, whatever he swung it, Morak. Okay, so it was it was like a right arm. So what you do is you get the sword and you lop off the arm, and the arm actually falls when it falls down. It falls down like sand. It's like it, it's raining sand, and but when you look at the earth elemental, it it immediately grows another arm. The arm that you dropped off, it grows another arm. I get a big old smile. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Swagster, so wizard. You're up, my friend. Yo, can, can I move away from it? Can I run away? You could do whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to move back a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to cast Magic Missile. Nice. All right, roll for the damage. And I just click on Magic Missile. Yep. I'm loading it up, the Magic Missile. I am doing some fancy moves because I'm pissed because it hit me in the face. 
and I'm going to launch a magic missile. All right. And now, uh... Yeah, you do it three times. Yeah. Oh, three times? Yeah. Three. That okay. sucks. So, so running... Well, it was three, four, and three, so it was ten. Yeah. And actually, uh, what's the damage on those? Is it uh, two, uh, two to five? Those are, those are four. They're D4s. Yeah. So, I mean, that was pretty close to maximum damage. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty good. They're automatic. Hits, okay. Though. So... So um, what ends up happening is Swag actually backs uh, Swagster the wizard. He actually backs up, and he does an incantation, and three darts, magical darts, appear in the uh, in the air, and he 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 kind of like uh, pushes his hand forward toward the um, earth elemental, and these three darts actually shoot into the um, into the earth elemental, and the earth elemental actually every time it hits the earth elemental, it's like it kind of rears back so they did affect him um he took the full damage which was 10. Right. landriel you're up so uh i cock my my mace back and i say um our god helm has spoken and you shall not survive. Nice. And I swing my mace again. Okay. Thirteen. So, well, <laughs> you, you still you, you are still flanking the earth elemental. So, oh, nineteen. So nineteen. That's a hit. Yep, nineteen's a hit. Roll for damage. Six. six. Oh, pretty good. So half of three. six is three. Hey, I could do simple math. All right. <laughs> Morak the Desolate. Alrighty. Um, I'm a little confused still, but I'm just going to swing again. <laughs> it worked for other people. We'll see what we can do. Okay. So, again, you know, you have advantage. Um, on your attack, <laughs> so the fought, the the one that you rolled um, is canceled out by uh, your twenty three. So twenty three is a hit. We're chipping away. So, at, <laughs> so Morak, remember, um, you have uh, you're playing a barbarian. Um, uh -huh. You can, uh, when you choose to do so, you can you can get into a rage boat. Uh yeah, I'm a uh, I'm a little more reserved. <laughs> <laughs> not pissed yet. Uh, yeah, I'm not pissed yet. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Um, so you stay right there. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Sabina, you are up. I will continue my way over here to. Lay a hand on my venturing companion and attempt to heal him. Oh, you love him. Yes. No. <laughs> In a hate sort of way. <laughs> hey. So I require you for survival. So swag, you uh, Yo. regain four hit points. Sabina comes over and um, she cures you for four hit points. So you can change the eight to twelve. Woo! I'm 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 alive. So Sabina, you I believe you only moved uh, four squares. You still have two squares of movement left. Would you like to um, use that, or just stay where you're at? I will take a step out of his way in case he wants to cast some more magic missiles. Okay. So Trev, uh, you. You try to intimidate. No, I, I hit that by accident. Sorry. Oh, okay. I like the play though. <laughs> no, that's dope. Just growl it. <laughs> so the earth. Big rock salt. So the rock salt. So 
the last person okay so uh so after swag hit the earth elemental the earth elemental got angry with sag so he he attempts to attack swag oh okay but before the earth elemental could move um Rolandriel, Morak the Desolate, and Anderwolf, you all have uh, opportunity attacks. So I'll let you guys roll opportunity attacks right now. They have to be from a melee weapon. Fourteen. Okay. Eight. And eight. Twenty. Twenty-three. Do we have advantage on the? You do. On that. You do. Okay. So, um, uh, Doug, your character missed. Uh, Trev hit. And Marco, you hit. So go ahead and roll for damage, guys. Seven. Six, 13. Half of 13. That's what? Seven? It depends on how you round, but yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I always round up. I always round up. I always give you guys the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Okay, so Sabina, um, as soon as you heal Swagster So Wizard, you look in the direction of the rest of the party and you see the elemental coming toward you guys. It actually lands right in front of you, but it, it, it actually attacks, again, it attacks the wizard. Oh! Hey, Paul. Yeah. Um, can I interrupt with my. Um... If I have a bonus action move. Oh, what is it? Um, it is a... Oop, where, there to go. Um, it's called Warding Bond. It is... Oh, sorry, that's not the one. It is this one. Shield of Faith. Okay. Uh, it's, a bon it's a bonus action. So, um, basically, a creature of my choice uh, gets a plus two to their AC. Okay, so can you do that out of turn? Uh, that's what I'm asking. So it, it, it's it's not my turn, but it's like a bonus action. So it's like, I didn't say I was holding action. Uh, I would say no. All right. I, I say <laughs> you, you could use it as a bonus action, but it still has to be your turn. All right. All right. So, um, 17. <laughs> Swag, what's your armor class? 13. Uh, 13. What? What is it? Your your armor cost is 13. 13? Yes. So, the Earth Elemental, you see it coming right. You just got healed for four points of damage, and you're feeling a little better than you did. But then you look up, and you see a fist uh, from the from the Earth Elemental slam into your face for, oh. te for 10 points of damage. Oh, damn! And then you get thrown back <laughs> five feet. Oh, no! <laughs> Anderwolf. Well, I see that everybody's non-magical damage is not doing much. So I start running at the elemental. I'm going to jump and try to just stick my greatsword right in his back. As I'm running, I grab my talisman around my neck and my sword be uh, begins to glow. And I'm going to use uh, divine smite on him. Oh, shit. That's fucking awesome. Uh... Uh, roll with advantage, my friend. That's a hit. Wow. 17 points of damage. So, out of every um, hit on the Earth Elemental, this one, the Earth Elemental actually felt. It felt the full impact of it. And it actually turns around and... Um, it um it has uh, the full attention of Anderwolf. So I wanted to actually try to stick my greatsword into him. So I, if it's into him, I'm like attached to his back, trying to ride him. Exactly. Okay, so you're attached to him then. Your sword is actually, um, well, I, I take that back. It actually, your sword 
you do the damage, but your your actually sword is just like if it if you put your sword in the sand and you ran it through the sand. That's what it was kind of like. You're kind of like you jumped on it with your sword, but you find yourself your sword just sliding through the the earth elemental. Okay. Uh, but you did get um, you did uh, give it uh, 17 points of damage, of uh, uh, radiant damage. So, Swagster So Wizard. Yes. Yes. Is I'm turn, I'm I'm hurt. You are. Can't, you only have two points. Am I able to do anything about my hurt? Um, I don't think you have any um, healing spells um, at your disposal. So that upsets Schwagster. <laughs> so then I'm going to... Um, I, I'm upset and I'm going to Ray of Frost it. Nice. Can, can I do it? You can. That is a hit. And, and I'm still upset about being punched in the face twice. Okay, so uh, let's see. On a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage. Okay, so do me a favor. Uh, roll a 1d8. We should just be able to hit the name, right? Yeah, just click on the chat screen on the right. Just click the word Ray of Frost. In the... Uh, where it's red? No. Purple. Uh, on the chat on the chat screen itself. Um, where, where it shows your roll. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. There nice. you go. Good roll. Good roll. I want to freeze this guy because I'm pissed. Okay, so you um, did cause it to um, slow down in movement. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the spell did affect it. Rolandriel. Oh, um, before we move on, uh, Swagster, would you like to move from where you're at or stay where you're at? Yeah, I want to run away. All right, go for it. You got to stay on the map, um, though. So you can go, I, I, you can go south. I, I can go six, right? Yep. I'm going to run over here. Very good. All right. Rolandriel. All right. So uh, first I'm going to do a bonus action. I'm going to do a healing word. Okay. On uh, the wizard here okay. so right there so he gets uh eight hit points back Woo! okay so, so swagster you're back to 10 points of damage or 10 sorry 10 hit points okay and then um that was my bonus action there's a bonus action spell and then uh for my regular action i'll do sacred flame on this uh, giant pile of rock salt. Okay. Okay. That is here. Uh, so that would be six radiant damage. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity. Eleven. Nope. Thirteen. Uh Six points of damage? Yeah, six radiant damage. And then I'm going to actually move up. Right there. Morak the Desolate. Alright, I have a question. Is yes. any part of him like frosty from the Ray Frost? Yes. Uh, the shoulders and its right leg. Okay. Uh, can I try to, like, grapple its right leg? And how big is this thing? This thing is... It is considered... A large... Elemental... A large elemental. So we'll say it's, like, eight feet tall. 
Oh, okay, okay. This, I thought he was bigger than that. All right, yeah. I'm gonna try to like grab. Can I do, like try to grapple him to like hold him off? Sure. Um, what would I roll for that? Strength. Yes. Okay, so with Sabina uh, behind the Earth Elemental, I would say you have advantage. So, um, 21 is a hit, so you do have its right leg grappled. Alright, um, that's good for me. <laughs> oh, did I do the right thing? It's a save. No, you want to click on the actual overall oh, attributes. No, I'm I'm okay with the strength. I'm okay with okay. strength because I, I asked I you to do strength. Well, yeah. So next time I want to hit this button, right? Oh, that's even better. Right. You critted. <laughs> oh, oh, I double critted. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> double dooms. <laughs> All right, um, Sabina. Did I? Did I notice when the sword just kind of glid through the elemental? You did. You did see that. I would like to try and Neldritch Blast it, but I, I want to go straight south with it so that I don't accidentally hit uh, Morak Desolate. Very nice. Very nice. Is that a 10? 10 that to is a 10. Yeah. Okay. So Unfortunately. Okay. So a 10 doesn't actually hit it. Um, you you shoot uh, this Eldritch Blast. And um, instead of hitting the Earth Elemental, the Earth Elemental actually opens up a hole in its body. And your, your Eldritch Blast goes right through it. Through the hole. So it's unaffected by the spell. Um, now it's the earth elemental. So, okay, so um, you three are right in front of him. Uh, the first one to hit him um, out of the group was um, Enderwolf. So it's gonna attack Enderwolf. And when it attacks Enderwolf, it's actually gonna use, instead of one fist, it's actually gonna use two fists. Can he do that while I'm like grabbing onto him still? He could. He can't move. He can't move, but he still can attack. Cause you grabbed its leg, right? Oh, I just said I grabbed it. I don't know. <laughs> I assumed you grabbed its leg. My, I don't. I, I didn't know how big it was at first. So my goal was just to try to uh, subdue so it completely. Yeah. It should be big. It, uh, technically, it should. I think it should be bigger than eight feet. Because <laughs> we're all medium characters. He's a large character. All right, we'll make him ten feet then. How's ten feet? <laughs> Is ten feet big what? enough for you guys? I'm seven foot, so it's not that far. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, well, it's got. He's got. I mean, be is it ever big, big enough? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Let's rewind. He is <laughs> fifteen feet tall. Okay, there fine. you go. There we go. Okay, there, there we go. go. On his right. leg. <laughs> I mean, right. he's taking up. He's taking up twenty squares or twenty feet of squares. Oh yeah. God, he's getting bigger. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> the the fifteen foot Earth Elemental attacks Enderwolf <laughs> with two fists. <laughs> oh wow! It actually rolled a one. Oh. Uh, let's see what happens. Here we go. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to find the chart where I put it. Ah, it's right here. All right. It actually loses all form, and it falls to sand, and then it and then it actually reforms again. So it actually loses its turn for a minute, and but 
in doing so, um, Morak the Desolate, he actually loses the grip of the of the Earth Elemental because it, it kind of went to sand and then it reformed again, but it doesn't it doesn't doesn't move from where it's at and it doesn't get an attack. So it goes straight to Anderwolf. I am gonna try to intimidate it. My eyes get really bloodshot and my muscles tense and I yell directly at it. Okay. Holy shit. Um, Do I have an uh, advantage with Sabina being up there? Yes. So its intelligence is negative three. Let's see if we're gonna do this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, it can speak languages. Okay, so this is what ends up happening. <laughs> Sabina's also intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what happens. The the Earth Elemental is about to attack um, Anderwolf with two fists, but um, Anderwolf, Anderwolf actually um, stands his ground. And how do you intimidate this um, Earth Elemental again? I'm just going to scream directly at it. Be gone! Okay, so it actually freezes where it's at. And then, like before, how it just collapsed into sand. That's what happens. It collapses the sand. And it actually disappears. Oh, bastard. I clear my throat. <clears> throat> <laughs> All right. Cowards, the lot of them. So we're no longer in turn order. We're no longer in combat. Um, so, and that's how it ends. This encounter ends. Um, Anderwolf actually intimidates the Earth Elemental to disappear, and it just crumbles into the sand. All right. Uh, Rolandrio looked at him and says, um, "It says." Good job, my man. <laughs> so, again, um, where uh, Sabina um, is, she actually looks and she sees a camel coming toward coming toward your campsite. Wrong place, wrong time, buddy. <laughs> um, Sabina ignores this camel for the moment and wipes the spit off of her face from that intimidation um, <laughs> and is going to make a beeline for the tent to get her stuff just in case something else happens okay so um, after this encounter I mean you guys are actually you know brushing off the sand that's on your guys' um, person you know uh, you find yourself dustier than you were before this encounter um so looking between uh the trees swagster sees a camel and there's someone riding on this camel um also when morak you turn around anderwolf and orlandro all three of you guys turn around and you see the same camel and you see a guy riding it and what's the guy look like i'm gonna show you right now Yes, I judge by how he looks. <laughs> but he's got a cool hat. Oh, he has, this is his face. This is what he looks like. This guy. Oh, that's not the pole. The okay. Jamestown logo makes it look like he has a swirly eye. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this. Uh, So the camel, uh, with the person riding on it, it, it goes all the way up to here. And pretty much, they just come up and they don't say anything, right? It, it's a man on a camel and someone is leading the camel, okay? So what you do notice 
is that the man on the camel, he has a small little chest. Um, it's like a, a, a wooden chest. And he's holding it with both hands, one on each side. Uh, when Rolandriel sees the, the chest, um, he says in just a normal voice, he says, it's a sign from the gods. Helm is with us. Nice. And I start walking towards the, the camel. Okay. So Whenever he says Helm, I give a little scoff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sabina walking out the tent. Yeah, you see what they saw. So, but you notice that um, this chest, it, it's probably only, it's it's probably only a foot long. It's really small, wooden. Um, what you notice, though, is that he he opens the chest, and when he, I ready my crossbow. So when he opens the chest, you notice that he kind of he kind of uh, bows his head, and you notice that the sand is starting to stir, and the area where the um, earth elemental. Uh, kind of dissipated a little like uh, a little suffer kind of little like um, in the sand kind of like kind of comes out of the ground and this suffer starts coming toward the man on the camel and uh, and as that suffer reaches him the suffer actually comes it, it actually raises off the ground and goes inside the box and the man holding uh, the, the chest, the box, he closes it. And then he puts it underneath his tunic. Uh, I call out, Rolandio calls out to him and, and says, uh, who goes there? And then, um, and for all to hear, um, well, you guys are pretty far away. Um, I would say um, Rolandriel and Sabina can hear him, uh, but you, you guys in the back, uh, Marak, Anderwolf, uh, Swagster, uh, you're a little far, far away f to hear him talk. Hint, hint. Yeah, right. can I move closer? Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> Like, can I go be we're by not, everybody? We're, we're not in combat, so don't worry about your uh, your speed. The spaces? Yeah, you can is move it? as close as you want. Is this fun here? Yeah, you're fine, Morak. How about that? Yeah, perfect. What I that? don't move. I'm sitting there holding my symbol of tear, saying a prayer from the previous battle. Okay, excellent. Okay, so um, we're out of combat. Uh, so, uh, just FYI, um, the man on the camel, he talks, okay, and he's not talking very loud, but for some reason that you guys could all hear him clearly, and he says, he introduces himself as Titimus Kular, he says he is the servant to the Black King, he says, um, um, my, he says, um, I have been um, tasked by my master to seek you out. He says, um, uh, he, he knows of your activity. He knows that you, you've come you know, into um, the Araba Desert and that you're headed to Al Fatar. But he says um, he would like you, um, he requests um, your audience. What was this guy's name? His name is uh, Tindemus Kular. He says, Kular. He says um, my master has um, many names. Uh, Bandit King, uh, the Desert Scourge, uh, the Desert Wind. I'm okay. drinking right now, by the and way. He, and yeah, he said, <laughs> yeah. Well, he he his first um, introduction to his master, he, he called him the Black King, and he says he wants um, he requests your audience. 
can I ask you? Okay, so who does this god serve? So, so, Sabina, okay, um, she rolled a history check. Wondering if in all my years studying, if I've ever heard of these names or these people. Okay, so, um, the thing with Sabina, um, before you set out into the desert, um, you did some research, and in reading, um, 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 uh, many uh, tomes, uh, you've heard, you've, you've, you've come across um, a, um, someone called the Black King. Um, the Black King um, is a, a nomad king um, that um, uh, travels uh, the desert. Uh, the thing is with him is he's at odds um, with the rulers of um, Alphatar. Uh, they actually, they're more, um, the Black King would be described as kind of like a, um, they're kind of like the rebels of the desert. Uh, they um, don't follow any um, other authority besides themselves. Um, uh, there's no one location where they where they live. Um, they they are they're pretty much hunted, so um, they move from location to location. So and as far as um, um, the uh, the animosity, um, it has um, as animosity uh, toward um, uh, um, Alpha Tar. It has gone for centuries. Noted. Right. Thank you. Uh, Rolandio would like to ask him um, what God does his master serve? He says, oh, he, he says, the sun god, of course. Rolandio crin cringes but says nothing. <laughs> he said, the, the sun god giveth and the sun god take away. I'd like to ask it a question. What do you ask him? What pay does it offer? He says, he says, he says, my mighty orc, he says, you would be paid handsomely. And if it, he goes, if it's jewels you desire, jewels you will get. If it is gold you desire, gold you will get. <laughs> Anyone else? I will reluctantly go along. Okay. So, okay. He said, "There's a he said, there's a stipulation." He said, um, "No one must know the location or um, the the route that we go. Um, if you decide to uh, follow me and meet my uh, my master, you must be blindfolded and chained." Chained? Yes. Chained. Why chained? So, you know, he tells you, um, in good faith, my friend. He says, no harm will come upon you. Hmm. Can I break out of chains? You could roll if you guys want. You could roll a. You could you could roll to see if he's bullshitting you. Yeah. All right. Well, do I feel confident that I could break chains, or is that not going to happen? You look at the chains, and you look at the chains, and you think, if I if I had to, I could. All right. I'm down. I don't care. <laughs> okay. So Sabina uh, rolled insight. Uh. uh Rolandrio uh, rolled insight. Any of you guys want to roll insight as well? You could. Everyone could roll insight. Trev, okay. 
I'm I'm trusting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, Trev's character, Andrew Wolf, um, you listen to what he says, and uh, you believe he's he's up and up. That he's telling the truth. That when he says no harm will come to you, um, if you travel with me, if I blindfold you and shackle you, you believe him. Same as Swagster the Wizard. I'm basically looking around to everybody else and getting a cue from them. Okay. Relandriel kneels down and grabs a fistful of of dust or dirt, mm -hmm. uh, sand, yeah. and then uh, I hold it out in front of me and I drop it to see if it drops to the right or the left. And as it drops to the right, I say, this is a sign of good things. Nice. I like it. I love that shit. <laughs> I love that shit. So I go, I go up to the next to the camel. Okay. So he goes to the dro. He goes, he goes, um, fair dro. Will you travel with us? I look to my remaining companions. Okay. And then he goes. Why should we trust? Why should we trust you if you keep such company as that creature? He said, "It was my. It was a test, my friend. And you have passed." All right, I walk up to him. Okay. He goes. He goes. <laughs> Wise choice, my giant friend. Swagster the wizard. Yo. What do you decide? Can I be invisible? <laughs> I don't know. Can you? I got I got an invisibility spell. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. can, can I be invisible and then like follow? Sure. Sure. Oh that, my that, gosh, yes. That, that's what I do. I'm like invisible. <laughs> Relandriel doesn't say anything, but he, he looks at the uh, footprints on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so Sabina, uh, what did you decide? I I joined them, okay. looking around, wondering okay. where the wizards right. went off to. So, okay, so, um, so this guy, Kular, he actually, he has servants, um, you know, uh, um, on the ground. Uh, they're actually kind of leading the camel uh, while uh, he rides on, on top of the camel. So they, they go to you, each, each, each one of you, and put shackles on, and the shackles connect. They connect to each other so you know it goes from it goes from morak to sabina to Anderwolf and to elandriel okay so you, you it's going to be in that order uh, is it like with, conga line style what's that is it like conga line style yeah with morak you are in the front and then on top of that you are blindfolded okay so as um he says, um, uh, before we travel, um, do you have um, anything to say? No? Okay. So let's, um, let's go, let, let us travel then. And then so. Delightful. So when you are traveling, you are traveling um, at night. Okay. Um, they are not using a light source. It's actually you guys are traveling. Um, um, you guys kind of through your blindfold, you could kind of see uh, kind of the moonlight um, kind of bouncing off the material. Um, it really is um, blurry, though, so you can't really focus on anything. But you notice that um, the moon is shining bright. So as you guys travel and um, you travel for a few hours, um, you do take a break in between. And in between, they um, the servants come with uh, water, and they want to know each of you if you want water. So 
as you guys travel, they ask if you want water, and if you agreed, they would bring a, wa a water skin up to your lips to wet your lips. Hey, Paul. Yes. Uh, we're, we're, we're walking, right? We're on yep. foot. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so uh, two things. One, the moon, uh, is it on our right or our left or in front of us or behind us? Okay, so when the sun set, it, it set, um, it set in the west, right? Oh, wait, mm -hmm. no. This is well, opposite. This is yeah. opposite. It was, the, the sun was setting in the east, so you are going uh, west. The moon, okay. is, the moon is to the west. All right, so the moon is to the west, so the moon is in front of us then. Correct. All right, and then the other thing is just informational. So, uh, from the moment we start walking, mm -hmm. I'm keeping track. I'm I'm keeping count of uh, how many steps we're taking, mm -hmm. and each time we stop, I just kind of lock that in. Like, all right, we stopped at a thousand steps. Yeah. Okay. So for gaming, um, for um, for gaming sake, um, any gear uh, you had in the tent. Uh, you reclaimed before you guys uh, took off. Okay. I don't want to cheat you guys. <laughs> and, um, okay, so you guys are traveling at night, blindfolded and shackled, okay? Um, you're actually um, behind the man with the camel. So the, the guy with the camel, he's leading the way. He's got his servants, you know, um, you know, um, on next to him, next to you guys. They're not really um, armed. So they're not like, you know, I mean, like soldiers, they're actually servants, you know, um, but Swagster, this is what you see. You see all of them in a row, um, a shackled and blindfolded, and they're following this guy on the camel. Right. And, and the whole time you're invisible. Yes. Okay. So you actually hear the guy on the camel and he, he, he kind of, he doesn't turn his head. Um, but he, you can hear, Swaxer, you can hear him say, so, are you keeping up, my friend? And you know he's talking to you. <laughs> I, 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 re I respond. You actually do. Okay, what do you say? I say, uh, you, yeah, I say, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 like, oh, a man of few words. I respect that. <laughs> All right. Relangio so, uh, mutters, curious. <laughs> okay. When they offered water, can I can I reach my gourd, or is that not possible? Your hands are shackled. Okay. So when you do uh, reach for your gourd, um, it's it's there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So then, I guess I'll just refuse. Oh. Yeah. If you wanted water, they would give you water. If you refused okay. to drink, you didn't have to. Yeah, I just drink from my gourd instead. Okay. And what is inside your gourd? Ah, I, I some kind of alcohol. I don't know what like. <laughs> nice. What exists in, ale. In, in this world or whatever? Yeah. Nice. Just I got a question. Probably cheap and strong. Okay. And uh, the person behind you, I believe, was Sabina. Sabina actually could smell the the, um, the beverage <laughs> that you're drinking. Oh, I'm sure everyone can smell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are so, these all humans? Yes. Yes. You're, you're traveling with, um, yeah, just humans. There's no other, other race uh, uh, in this group. So... What you end up doing is you travel through the night um, until um, you reach a point early in the morning. And then when you reach your destination, you you are first unshackled, right? And then your blindfolds are taken off. And this is what you see. That's a lot that? of people. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you end up um, being 
in um, an area of a ruined temple. It's a, um, uh, by the looks of it, it's an ancient, te uh, uh, ancient temple that is no longer um, uh, being used, uh, but if it's in ill repair. But as you look around, you see um, they're kind of like um, ninja type warriors. They're kind of, let's see, let's see if I could. That's what they look like. Wow, nice. Each guy, each guy looks. Red each guy looks very identical. Okay, so um, I know I kind of blacked out certain areas. Um, over here, uh, there's a row of five. Over here, there's a row of five. And on the main steps um, that lead up, there's one guy um, on the steps, and he ha pretty much has his arms crossed as he looks at you. And then from behind, you hear the voice of Titimus Kular, and he says, My friends, it was a pleasure traveling with you. Good luck. And then so he gets back on his camel and he actually rides away with the servants. So you're standing right there in kind of like uh, the bottom of this temple. And the guy on the steps, this guy, he uncrosses his arms and he actually walks up higher up. He walks up here, turns around, and he beckons you to follow him. D does he know Schwagster is invisible? He only sees four people. So we're going to put a marker on you. Hold on. Before anyone moves. I am going to put a marker on... Uh, okay. I'm going to put a little ninja. If you look at your token, on the bottom right is a little ninja mask. That signifies that you are um, invisible. So, as far as your invisibility spell, um, what is the 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 time? Um, how long does it last? There has uh, to be a time limit somewhere, right? Yeah. Let me look. <laughs> and that's on the spell page. It should be under the spell invisibility. It says. Um, Casting time? No, not ca well. It, casting time should be instantaneous. It shouldn't take that. Oh long. yeah. But I want to oh, know what's the length of the spell? How long does it last? It says concentration up to one hour. Okay, so you are no longer. You're actually you couldn't have been you couldn't have been um, invisible the whole the whole night. You could only be. Yeah. So you were uninvisible a long time ago. So let me okay. take off that marker. <laughs> so he does see five. Do I see, um, I just take a quick glance around. Does it do, do I see any symbols of the sun God? You know, right now it, it is a ruined temple. Um, you do see some places where there was, um, uh, statues, tall towering statues, but they're all crumbled. You can't really tell from where you're standing. Okay. I noticed too, that there's tattoos on their arms. Yep. Are those sun god tattoos? Maybe. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can I roll a history check? Sure. All right. I just want to know if this guy was telling me the truth. Uh, where to go? Oh, four. Yeah, he must be telling me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> May I also roll on that one? Of course. 16. Okay. So, you know, uh, Sabina, uh, with her research, uh, she uh, recognizes those tattoos um, uh, that kind of goes together with um, this black king. So it looks like uh, from her research, everything adds up. 
if she shares that. that if she shares that information um i don't know sabina do you share that information or do you keep it to yourself sabina would push forward uh to the front of the group but in doing so give him a like pointed look as if to say rolling eyes can you believe this and <laughs> and walks to uh follow him very nice all right so um what do the rest of you guys do i'm also gonna just move up okay just as a side note i'm in a fantasy football league called the black kings oh nice <laughs> <laughs> How long have we been together as a group? Are we um, just meeting? No, 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 no. Uh, you know, the thing is, you guys are third level. Um, when you guys all met, uh, you guys met at different times. So I'll leave that up to you guys. I'll let you guys do your backstories, um, how you guys met. But yeah, it wasn't like all of a sudden you guys appear from the fire. You guys were kind of like um, traveling, trying to get to the same place. Um, on your on your journeys, uh, you guys have met each other, and you ended up with this group. So by now, I would know that Sabina is kind of calculating. I would think so, yeah. All right, so I I'll think follow you guys her. all. I think you guys all <laughs> have a good feel for each other. Um, I'm not saying that your relationships are um, friendly, um, but you know that um, if you stay together. Um, you have a greater chance of success. Yeah, I'll follow too. Okay. Okay, so he comes, he goes all the way up to this point right here. And nothing happens. Um, he just stands there and I, I, you, you feel like he's standing there and he, he's waiting on you. Stay back here. I want you don't get don't go past oh, okay. this right here. Right, just stay like right here. Is that everybody? Swagster. Okay. So okay, so we'll we'll say that you guys Swagster, are you gonna stay up right there or you wanna go up farther? Are you good there? No, I'm good. Alright, cool. Alright. So you guys are standing there. Um uh this guy right here that kind of uh, led you inside, he actually stays, he actually moves from where he's at. And when he moves, he reveals um, someone that um, looks different than the rest of these guys. So he's all, he actually talks. Well, let me let me highlight them. Oh, well, I, I wanted to. Whenever we came in this room right here, yeah, I came in first, and then Morat came in, and then Sabina came in between us. Okay. Like we're her bodyguards. Okay, very good. I like that. So he says, "This is what he says." He says, "He says, welcome. I am." Amir Astabula. They call me the Black King. I have heard of you, your group, ever since you entered the desert. I am curious, why are you here? was told there was a job that needed to be done. He goes, perhaps. I elbow Sabina in the side. It gives you a stink face. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you. He says, tell me why you want to go to Alpha Tar. Uh, Rolandriel says, um, I have uh, been quested with bringing people 
to the light of our God Helm. He says, I roll my eyes. He saw Helm. Who is this Helm? The one true God. He says, He laughs. He says, Ha ha. There is only one God. That is the sun God. He is highest above. He gives us warmth. He gives us life. That is the only God that you need to be following, my friend. But that's not why you're here, are you? Why are you here? Why do you go to Alphatar? It is why I'm here. <laughs> he says, he says, you know, the people who rule Afatar, they have imprisoned my people for years. He says, we, we have, we have fought them for centuries, but they have something that belongs to me, to my family. You must claim it for me. You do that, you do that, my friends, and I will make you rich beyond your dreams. This item of which you speak, does it protect you? Or will it protect your people? He says, it is the symbol of my people. It is something um, of our identity. It is something that was taken from us, from the water merchants, the rulers of Alphatar. Then I will help you on this quest to recover your item and return the safety and protection of your people to you. I want to do an insight roll. See, just like the last guy, if I can feel that he's telling the truth or not. Okay. He is. He is. And I will help you as well. Just point me in a direction and tell me what I'm after. <laughs> and you, and he points to Sabina, he says, we do not see um, your kind very often. What do you say? Who took it and why? He said, he said the water, he says, well, he, he said the water merchants from Alphatar took a, um, took an item from his family but he was he wasn't specific he didn't say what it was sabina's asking who took it and why he says he says those bastards they took the black opal and then when he says the black opal in unison every soldier uh, that he has they go who they all say it in unison when he says Black Opal. What's hmm. the political angle to this, King? He says, he goes, it is our identity. It is, it is my family's birthright. I says, he says, so, give that, he says, get that. Return it to me, and I will reward you handsomely. So what you're saying is that your kingdom is at stake? Yes, we can say so. There must be a very good reason you haven't sent your own men, or did you? Ah. This is what he says. He just says, he says, he says, um, he says, my army is very small. 
Alpha Tar Army, biggest army, he says, I would not stand a chance on the battlefield. Huh. Swag Swagster has something. Okay. So he says, okay, so the 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 guy who's who's sitting and he's actually he's sitting on a uh, a makeshift throne. It's not very fancy. It's it's pretty much just a pile of rocks. So he goes, who is that in the back? Have him come forward. What does he have to say? I, I, uh, I have a couple of things here. What's this religion one? He says, he says, come forward. So, okay. Okay. So you haven't moved. So all the soldiers are, and they were all looking like, you know, in one direction. Now they're looking at you, Swag. There's there he's because he's telling you to come forward. Okay. I'll I'll take a step forward. <laughs> okay. He's all ah. He says, Do I frighten you, my friend? He says, I frighten many men. I, I say I'm still upset about your test with your sand demon. He says, this is what he says. He says, well, I had to test you, right? How do I know that you can take care of yourself? He says, you are alive, so you must be <laughs> worthy. <laughs> he saw you're worthy, no? I say, yeah. Can I can I roll something or do something? What do you want to do? What's this religion one? Uh, religion is like um, if there's like uh, something that um, you're curious about. If you wanted to, if you wanted to know if it has a connection to a type of religion. So that that doesn't apply because he's telling us he's already is following the sun god, right? Yeah. He did mention that, yeah. And um, his servant also mentioned the same thing. And then... Can, um, can I, go ahead. Can I do some sleight of hand? What are you going to do? I'm going <laughs> to uh, do sparkles out of my fingers. Oh, nice. You don't have to do sleight of hand. I think you have a cantrip that does the same thing. What is... The, where is that? Uh, I think uh, under your spell... Prestidigitation. Yep, thank you. I hate saying that what? word. Say it again. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. So under the <laughs> other. Oh. Press the digitation. Yeah. Press the digitation. There you go. I love that word. Yeah. How, how do I do? Do I just click on it? You just oh, say yeah. It. You can. I say abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay. Was, and then what do you do? Sparkles, sparkles shoot out of my face. So, okay, this is what ends up happening. Okay, you you step forward, all right, and you you put your hands up in the in the air, and then you do fireworks, and then um, do all do all the guards get scared? Of no, me? they actually everyone starts laughing, and he goes, "Oh, you brought an entertainer." <laughs> I say, but that's not what I need right now, my friends. I said, I need someone. To get the black opal. Don't worry. We'll get the job done and I'll take his cut. <laughs> <laughs> I say, and, and, and he ends with this. He goes, you do this for me. And he says, I will owe you my life. This, I promise. Okay. And this, and this, um, that's how we're, right, at, we're going to end the session here. Um, we're, we're close to the two hour mark. Um, I want to thank everyone that's here uh, Trev the Shipping Guru, Uncanny Swag, Marco from Switch Comics, um, Echo, and Dougie Fresh. Um, these guys, um, uh, I'm going to put links to um, their YouTube channel. Um, if they have a YouTube channel, so you could check them out. 
um, they all have great content, and um, uh, they're, um, I'm so happy that um, uh, uh, they can make it tonight and play this game. Um, I look forward to our next session. Um, so uh, we're going to call it a night, and um, I want everyone to say um, goodbye. Bye. 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 No wizard. <laughs> <laughs>